Next up is organs. So like I had mentioned about tissues, where it was a group of specialized cells performing the same function, when you had a bunch of them together, that would be considered a tissue. Now, organs are just one step up. So organ is a group of tissues with similar functions, right? So you'd have a, a, group, of, a group of different types of tissues all performing the same function, and that's what an organ is. Um, so we're going to look at a few, um, a few organs. Again, um, like it says here, the human body has 78 organs, approximately 78 organs. Okay, so we're not going to go through all of them. I'm going to touch on some today, and then we're going to go over a couple of um, organ systems, and we're going to talk about other organs within those systems. So today we're going to talk about um, the five major ones that are vital for survival. These are the heart, the brain, kidneys, liver, and lungs. I'm sure you guys would have guessed brain, heart, and lungs, but maybe not all of you would have known that the kidneys and the liver are also vital organs, okay? And I've thrown also in here um, skin and the stomach, okay? So we're gonna start with the skin. We're starting with skin because it's the largest organ and because most people don't actually know that the skin is an organ. Um, so it's composed of two main layers, okay? Now, one of those layers um, has a variety of different layers within it, but we're only gonna talk about the two major, the main ones, okay? So there's the superficial epidermis and then a deeper dermis, okay? Um, so skin is multiple layers of cells and connective tissue, okay? So it's got a lot of connective tissue within it. Um, the top layer of of your skin consists of mostly dead cells and they shed periodically and is progressively replaced by new cells. Now, I'm sure you probably don't know this, but approximately every 28 to 30 days, you have shed all of the skin cells that you have right now. So in 28 days from today, you will have all new skin cells then from this moment. So it takes about 28 to 30 days to do that. Um, the dermis provides strength and elasticity due to the presence of collagen. There's that word again, collagen, that protein, um, and elastin fibers. And then there is three main functions of the skin. That's protection, regulation, and sensation. So within all of your, um, tissue layers of your skin, okay, um, you have millions of nerve endings, right? These are to help you detect, you know, pain you know, heat, cold, things like that. Um, so that's part of the sensation part. Um, the other thing is protection because it's it's covering all of your organs inside, um, but regulation as well. So this is where um, it helps with kind of like homeostasis of your body, right? We, we thrive at um, a temperature um, and I think it's 37.5 five degrees is our body temperature, right? And this is, um, so your normal state. Uh, so how your body, your skin regulates itself is by um, shivering when you're cold to heat up, um, sweating to cool your skin down when you heat it, um, when, you're, when, you're, when you're hot and you need to cool down. Um, so those are certain things that, um, your, your skin does to help maintain that, that normal status all the time, that homeostasis, that, that temperature, right? You run a fever, your skin shows a fever, um, when, when you're sick or when you're fighting off infection, um, it gets really red when, you know, or has a rash when there's something wrong, right? These are ways that your skin is showing you, um, that there's problems that are happening, right? This is the way that it, it regulates what's happening in your body. Um, okay, so that's that's enough of skin. Uh, let's go down to the brain. Um, so actually, the brain weighs about three pounds, you know, and it's about the size actually of your, just um, slightly bigger than your fist. Your fist is actually the size of your heart. Brain's a little bit bigger. Um, but 75% of the brain is made up of water uh, and it's made up of soft tissue. 
Now, with your brain, um, the function, it contains 100 billion neurons, right? We talked about, you know, your nervous tissue, um, those nerve cells that are sending synapses, signals to your brain, right? So you have these 100 billion neurons in your brain, and they are running these synapses all the time, okay? The brain never sleeps, right? Even in your, in your sleep, you're creating muscle memory. Did you know that? when you repeatedly do something over and over again. So someone who's really good at, um, I'm just gonna say basketball because that was my sport, um, basketball, right? So I've taken a million foul shots in my life. So sit and sleeping in, going to sleep at night, your brain is remembering those foul shots. It's remembering the strength that you put in, the angle that you're shooting at. That's how people become really good at certain sports is, because your brain is constantly going over it. It's committing it to memory, right? Um, so, so that's, so that's, um, that happens when you're sleeping. Um, anyways, there's lots of parts of the brain, but we're not going to get into that much depth with, with regards to the brain. So let's keep going. So let's talk about the liver now, because I think a lot of people don't actually know what the liver or the kidneys actually do. So a liver, the liver is actually a very complex um, chemical factory. It processes pretty much everything you eat, drink, breathe in, or rub on your skin. Um, and it's made of a type of connective tissue. And one, um, not fun fact, but a, fa a fact about a liver is that it can function even when like two thirds of it is damaged. All right. And this is the problem that we run into, actually, um, is why, you know, cancer of the liver is so um, fatal is because we don't even notice that there's an issue with the liver because it can function so well for so long when it is um, so damaged. So by the time that we do see signs of the liver damage, um, it's almost too late. Okay. Um, so this is why that's, that's why it's, um, it is so, so fatal when you get, when you get something that is affecting of the liver, um, we've got to take care of our organs, right? And if it's processing, um, everything that you're eating and drinking and breathing in, just make sure you're eating and drinking and breathing in the right things, right? Um, your liver provides energy. Um, uh, it fights off infections and toxins and it helps clotting the blood um, when it needs to. Uh, it helps with regulating hormones, it regulates your body's cholesterol, and it also helps produce bile for um, digestion, okay? The next thing we're gonna get into is your lungs, okay? So your lungs are made up of sponge-like tissue that is surrounded by a pleural uh, membrane that separates the lungs from the chest wall. Um, so what this does, um, we're gonna get into more talking about the lungs tomorrow when we talk about the respiratory system. So I'm not gonna to dive too much into it right now. Um, but there's, what happens is, is the lungs are, I wanna say, okay, honey, just go, go please. Um, sorry. Um, what it kind of looks like is that, okay, go sweetie. Um, is that, uh, it's like broccoli. <laughs> I always compare it to broccoli, but that's what it looks like. That's what your lungs look like. Um, is that you have these, these branches of broccoli and that's what's though. That's what's pulling in and exhaling the oxygen and the carbon dioxide, but it's covered by what I've mentioned here is a pleural membrane, which is like, um, like a gummy substance, right? And that's just providing all those broccoli-like trees protection, right? And it's keeping it um, away from the chest walls. We're gonna talk about more th about that when we talk about the respiratory system. And then I'll show you pictures of what it looks like. But the main function of the lungs is to help oxygen from the air we breathe enter the red blood cells. And also part of that is um, exhaling out carbon dioxide, okay? So the lungs work kind of in a different system than the heart works, but those two systems work simultaneously together. Now we have our heart. Um, so this is a muscular organ. Again, we talked about this. It's involuntary mus uh, um, the muscle, the tissue, um, constantly beating without us having to tell it to. 
Um, it's made of a dense connective tissue. So again, connective tissue, but with the heart, it's, it's very dense. Um, and the function of the heart is it pumps out um, oxygenated blood to the body and it pumps deoxygenated blood to the lungs. All right. And again, we're going to talk about the heart a bit more uh, when we talk about the circulatory system. Okay. So now let's go into the kidneys. This is something we, um, I think a lot of people don't really know what they do. Um, so they are made of a million filtering units called nephrons. Okay. So it's a filter system. Okay. So each nephron contains a filter. So the tissue that kidneys are made of are the connective and epithelial tissue. Okay. So what kidneys do is it filters fluid from your body. Okay, it takes out waste, it regulates plasma, which we're going to talk about because plasma is a part of um, your blood. So make sure that there's not too much or too little of the plasma. It produces hormones and then it regulates pH and ion concentration. Now, again, we haven't done chemistry yet this year, so you might not understand what pH and ion concentration is. But we will we will get into that when we talk about chemistry. And it's not crucial to understand right now. Just understand that kidneys. It's a filter system, okay? It filters the fluid from your blood. Um, and then lastly is the stomach. So the stomach is comprised of connective tissue and three layers of muscle. Because remember your stomach is constantly contracting and helping um, any food that you eat, it has to kind of break it down. Your stomach does that. So it is a temporary food storage. I didn't know that if you knew this, but the food that you eat actually sits in your stomach for two hours or a little bit longer than that. OK, um, so it mixes with the, you know, the acid that's in it. It's hydrochloric acid, um, which helps breaks the food down, but also the contraction and relaxation of the muscle layers that helps with the digestion of food. So what it's doing is it's getting it prepared and ready to send to the intestines, because actually we'll talk about the digestive system a bit more. But most of the digestive, um, the digestion help, um, happens in your small intestine. Okay, it's not actually even in the stomach. The stomach is just kind of like a, a breaking the food down process, right? You, that's not where digestion happens. It happens in the small intestine. Majority of it happens in the small intestine. A little bit in the large intestine, but most of it, it is in the small intestine. So that's um, the stomach mostly is just so it stores the food, it breaks it down, and then it sends it to the small intestine at a process that the intestines can pro process it. So it, it regulates the food going through the small intestine. Um, and that's it, that's all the organs that we're gonna talk about now, cause we're gonna get into a couple of more when we talk um, specifically about the different um, systems that we're gonna get into.